Hey guys, we're back to show you another method for using an escape system for victim rescue. Now in previous videos, we've shown you a couple options for this already. But this is a new procedure that was developed by a brother from the District of Columbia Fire Department in Washington, D.C. His name is Kelly Byrne, and he sent me some information on this a while ago, and I've been teaching it ever since. Out of respect toward Kelly, I call it the burn technique, but uh, <laughs> it would probably be more appropriate to call it so you don't burn technique. Regardless, what I like about Kelly's method is that it keeps the hook topside available for the rescuer to use. And this is important if you find yourself in a situation where you're luring out a victim, again, whether they're a firefighter or a civilian, and conditions are going south so quickly that you know you're going to have to follow suit or bail out immediately afterwards. If your anchoring options are limited or worse, non-existent, having the hook available for you to use is going to be critical. And Kelly's method allows for this. But it does rely on a couple factors. First of all, you're going to have to be able to lure the victim all the way down to the ground or at least to a floor below the fire. And the reason for this is that you're using the hook as a friction controlled DCD. You're not using your descent control device, you're using the hook to lower off the victim. So you're going to have to be able to unload the victim's weight so you can remove the rope from the hook so you can use it as, as an anchor. If you can't do this, Kelly teaches a different technique that we may show you in another video. Second, you're going to have to set up and configure your system in a manner that's conducive to this type of deployment. So at this point, I'd like to take a look at setup and some of the elements you need to consider. The components that are important in your setup include the type of hook, the distance from the base of the hook to the top of your DCD, having a, a loop in the terminal end of your rope, and having a secondary carabiner available. Looking at each component individually, the type of hook is critical. It has to have a handle or a hitching slot. This specifically is a CMC flash hook and the one that I prefer. I simply think it's the best hook on the market. But again, any hook that has that handle or hitching slot will work. The type of DCD you have isn't that important. I do recommend one that is auto-locking or self-breaking, but it really is personal preference. What is important though is the distance from the top of your DCD to the base of the hook. Most firefighters will initially set up their system with a distance of six to eight inches from the top of the DCD to the base of the hook, which allows the DCD to clear the sill when they place the hook as a last ditch anchor. When you're deploying the burn technique, you want to close up this distance. Remember, you're using the hook as a friction controlled DCD, so you want it as close to your, your body as possible. The loop at the end of your rope can be a simple overhand knot, it could be a figure eight on a bite, or it could be a barrel knot. This allows you to attach your carabiner for victim rescue. Now you could keep it pre-attached if you wanted to. I keep mine separate, attached to my belt, because I, use, uh, I deploy a couple different techniques for victim rescue, and it keeps my options open. When you're placing your rope in your bag, whatever type of bag you have, you're going to start with that terminal end on the outside so it's available, uh, and you got easy access to it. Stuff the rope back and forth till you get to the top, and you'll be good to go. Let's take a look at deployment. Okay, now we're going to show you the whole procedure step by step so you can eat, see each one of the elements as, as we put it in place. As we mentioned in previous videos, you want to be at, at the exit point with the victim and the window should already be cleared out. Again, the door would be closed, but keep in mind that conditions are deteriorating pretty quickly. So fire is already extending through that door, coming through the walls, coming through the ceiling, coming through the floor already. So you got to rock and roll. You don't want to waste any time. Realistically, guys, you got about a minute to do this. You're going to need about a minute. And that's conservative, taking into account the conditions you're probably dealing with. So a minute minimum. Uh, if you've got 30 seconds or less for this room to light up, this probably ain't going to happen. One of you, either the victim or the rescuer, probably isn't going to make it out. So you got to keep that in mind. Uh, when we position, ideally, I want to set up on the left side of the window, because that's how the victim's going to roll out, and this is the position I want to be in. So I want the victim facing me, and I want to be facing the victim. The first step, guys, is to come in, pull out the lead end of your system. I'm going to clip into my belt or harness, lock off, if it isn't already pre-attached. And then again, I want to close up this gap between the top of the DCD and the hook. Remember, I want this hook as close to my body as possible. Step two, then, is to come in, 
and pull out the terminal end of your system. Really, if you're only going down two floors and you've got a 50 foot system, I'd recommend that you take all the rope out of your bag or pocket and just drop it on the ground. That's probably your best bet. Take the carabiner and clip it to the end of your terminal, the terminal end of your rope if, uh, if it isn't pre-attached. Obviously, having your system pre-attached to your escape belt or harness, having the secondary carabiner pre-attached to your terminal end is definitely going to make this operation faster and more efficient. I want to start on the victim's left, my right, same side where the rope is. Come around their back. Again, if it's a firefighter, go underneath their SUV back plate, as we've shown you in previous videos. Come to the front, lock it off. You want that bite on a carabiner midline, directly in the center, uh, in the center line of the victim. Now, here's the critical part. And you got a close up on this. Mm -hmm. This is why having a handle or a cavity uh, or a hitching slot in the hook is critical. You're gonna make a, you're gonna hold the hook just like I have it here, first of all. I like to have it so it's coming off on my right, holding it in my left hand. I wanna make a bite of roll. Come underneath the hook. I wanna hold tension on the end that's toward the victim. Feed out what you need on the rope that's coming to the ground. Come over the top and then tension off at this point. I don't want any more than six to 12 inches from the top of the hook to the victim. The reason for this as they roll out is I don't want a big shock load or drop load applied on the, on the escape system. So I want to keep this proximity close. If you notice the hook guys, you'll see the wraps that actually take place around the handle of the hitching slot. These wraps are what create the friction and allow the hook to be used as a DCD. There's a lot of friction here just with these wraps and I control and I can control a pretty heavy load. This bite point that you see on the back of the hook, this is probably your greatest friction point right here because the rope's bent over onto itself. This friction point is critical. It gives me a lot of control with a heavy victim, but if this hook gets too far away from me, I can lose control of this and the, the rope can actually lock off on itself, which will terminate the victim's descent. I won't be able to lower them all the way down to the ground, and I won't be able to release the victim's weight uh, from the hook, and I won't be able to use it for self-rescue. So that's why it's important to keep this distance of the hook close to your body so I have this control. If you notice, as I torque the hook to the left, I release that tension on that bite point. That's going to allow the victim to slide out a little faster. If the victim's weight is heavier, if they're a bigger uh, victim, I let go of that hook and I create more tension but you want this hook within reach. The critical component to manage that and, don't, and so you don't lose that distance is you've got to focus on the DCD. Now this is uh, the CMC, their latest uh, version of the Escape Artist. I need to control the release lever at all times. If this lever will get uh, pinched or squeezed together in the release point, I'm going to slack out rope coming out of the top of the DCD and this hook's going get, to get out of reach of me being able to manage it. So I gotta hold this at the same time because the hook is a friction control DCD, I need to manage the brake hand side of this roll. When we're getting ready to roll out, I want a knee into the sill wall. That's critical. That's what's gonna prevent me from getting yanked into the window. I also can use my shoulder somewhat to counter stabilize as well. The victim's gonna place her hand on the inside of the roll, just like you see here. Now this is uh, contrary to what we teach you for self bailout. Usually, you're having your hand on the outside of the roll when you're bailing out yourself. Here, you want the victim's hand on the inside. The reason for this is I'm gonna roll right with the victim into the center plane of the window, and there's never gonna be a threat of this roll pinching their, their arm. If I got on the inside, there is a threat. So I got a strong brake hand, I'm controlling that release lever, on belay. Okay, victim, go ahead and roll out. Let the DCD and the hook get pulled all the way out. And now I lower the victim, the hook is in reach. Squat down, stand up. This allows me to release the hook. I come to the DCD, give myself the clearance that I need to bail out. On the leg. On the leg. I roll out, slap the leg. Obviously guys, there's a lot of different DCDs on the market. We just want to show you another one. This is a Sterling F4. 
to reinforce that handle, that release lever positioning. The uh, Petzl XL, uh, another device that you're going to have to worry about. Uh, those are probably some of the, the main DCDs that are on the market right now. But anything that has a control lever, you really want to keep an eye on. And the DCD just in itself. But you notice if this was a projected sill, if you got that lever caught underneath that projection, you could bend or distort that lever or actually even lock the victim off in place almost like a hook and you're not going to be able to release that. So you've got to keep this, an eye on these levers, position them so they don't get caught on the sill and hold them in a position where they don't get released. You have to hold them in the locking position as the victim rolls out the sill. So we just want to point that out on another DCD. Okay, so a different camera angle now so you can see everything that takes place. Again, I got my knee into the sill wall already. We're at the corner of the window. I got my shoulder in. I'm controlling the handle of the DCD and I'm controlling the bolt coming out of the hook. So I got great hand discipline, good proximity between the top of the hook and the victim. Instruct them to place their hand on the inside. I control the DCD. They can go ahead and roll out. The big thing, don't do it yet, Trav, is I want to make sure I'm watching where that rope is on the ground. If I don't and I, and I step over that rope and get in between my legs, that's a potential problem. So you gotta have good situational awareness here, guys. You're managing the DCD uh, release lever, you're managing the brake uh, side of the rope coming out of the hook, and you're watching the rope on the ground, so neither one of you step into it. So there's a lot of elements to control and manage. All right, Trev, and go ahead and roll out. DCD, now I can tell the victim at this point to grab the rope coming toward the hook. They can take some of their weight off the system, take some pressure off their back, I don't have to worry about the handle anymore. The hooks are within reach. I lower them down, squat down, stand back up. This allows me to release the rope from the hook. Again, take what you need to make sure that your hook can be positioned and your DCD will clear the sill when you punch out. That's important. On belay it, on belay it. Right, another question that we get is in regards to the restroom's position at the window. There is always a concern when students initially see this as a threat for the restroom to pull out the window as the victim's rolling out. Now there's a couple things that you can do to control that. And the biggest one, as we mentioned, is getting the knee into the sill wall right away. Using your posing shoulder, elbow, forearm to counter brace on the side of the window frame of the wall. And that's going to ease you into the window, into the center line of the window, as the victim rolls out. Obviously, the big drawback is that you're in the threshold, uh, the heat threshold, the thermal column venting out the window. We usually answer that with, if it's that hot, the chance of you being able to get the victim out and yourself is probably going to be slim to none. So it's one or the other. So some, some rescuers do or prefer this position, where they get down. Um, in a, in a seated position with their feet up against the sill wall, counter bracing, some will actually even lay on their back and, and put their feet up higher on the sill wall to counter brace. This will definitely keep you underneath that thermal column, but the big disadvantage is you can't see the victim. I want to be able to see the victim. I want to know how they're doing. I want to know when they're approaching the ground or any obstructions. So I want to have face-to-face uh, -face communication uh, with that victim at all times. As far as there being a real threat of the victim pulling you out the window, I'm 5'10", a buck 75, so I'm not a big dude. The heaviest firefighter I've lowered out in full gear with this technique is 360 pounds. That's over twice my body weight. It's 185 pounds over my body weight. So I was able to control that victim without a problem. I'm not gonna lie, you will feel some pressure on your back and at your hips once you do get to the window and you're bearing all the weight, but the sill, itself is taking a lot of the victim's weight and that's why you have so much control. So try it out, try both techniques, see what you like best. And you're ready to go for time, you call it. Three, two, one, go. Keep the rope in my pocket this time, not drop it on the ground. Take 
site. Okay, roll out. 30 seconds. Sit down, stand up. Clearance, on blade, on blade. 